Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today I have a bit of a special episode for you. We're actually going to be interviewing Oliver uh, Delta Lima 4 Kilo Alpha, the inventor and manufacturer of my favorite portable amplifier, the PA500. Now, this is the first time I've done a video like this, so uh, be kind. Yeah, I'm not used to doing it. My equipment's not set up for this type of uh, episode, but uh, I thought it was important and interesting enough to bring it to you anyway. So stick with me, and uh, <laughs> what do I say with this part? So stick with me, and uh, let's listen to the interview. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign there. Hi, Julian. How's it going? Hello, Oliver. It's <laughs> going well. It's going it's well. Good. Yeah, especially after uh, meeting you in Helsinki. That was an excellent trip. Yeah, it was a nice meetup. I really appreciate to see you in person. Yeah, it, it was wonderful to see you as well. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's a bit odd when you meet people on the internet. Uh, you know, it's always wonderful that you get a chance to see them in person and put a face to the uh, to the personality, you know, over social media or Telegram or whatever. It's uh, right. it's nice. Yeah, it's really nice. It's different. Hmm. So I think today we're here to talk about the PA500 and, uh, you know, talk about why you built it and ask you some uh, different questions about... Uh, you know, the process and the, the design philosophy and, uh, you know, just a general chit chat about, uh, yeah. what the heck is behind it? What the heck is behind it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <Good question. laughs> so, um, if I can, do you mind if I go ahead and start Oliver? Mm -hmm. Um, all right. So, what was the design motivation behind the PA500? I mean, uh, why did you design it the way you did? What was behind that? Yeah, it's a good question. I think we all have often the situation where we think, what a mess. Cable yeah. cars, different devices for setup does not very well fitting to, together, right? So That's right. my dream was from the beginning to build a PA which combine most wanted features. Yep. Or MCOM, QRP deployment. So the device should be, of course, slick, nice, pick and, pick and go cap capable. Industrial robustness is, is also in more, more and more important because people want it. Yep. Lightweight is for sure also important. In, in specific for QRP or on the go use. Yeah, feature reach, <clears throat> what I can say more, I like um, Vox support. Yeah. Quite important to have the, yeah, to not having the um, cable hassle, right? You know what my favorite feature is? No, I don't know. Yeah, so the current consumption. <laughs> yeah. yeah, oh yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, I mean, it's uh, around 100 milliamps. It's astonishing. It's, it's just astonishing, you know, to be able to deploy this, mm -hmm. well, to take my QRP radio and, and the PA500 and to get the same output power I would be using with the QRO radio uh, without the overhead. So, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, basically... It, I wasn't sure at the beginning that I can reach very low power consumption during RX or during um, standby. Mm -hmm. uh, but because I, I have the possibility internally to shut off every module. So I have more, more than one, one, one module. I have the PA, there's the tuner section, there's the filter section. Everything can be shut off. Um, 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 separately, I would yep. say. Yeah. Yep. Outstanding. 
Yeah. Well, I think you did a wonderful job with it. Um, my next question, forgive me, I have to read it here, but my next question, uh, having built in the tuner, the Vox, uh, auto band switching, filters, uh, incredible current consumption, are there any features you wish you could have implemented uh, or added later to the PA500? Very good question. So one feature will come very soon, which called auto powering on. Uh -huh. The PA should powering automatically on. Yep. I mean, the question is easy. If the PA goes off for some reason, yep. an example for low battery, um, in, in an MCOM situation, uh, it should be powered on again after the power source is reliable and uh, um, reliable. Yeah. So, an example, you have uh, the PA in an MCOM situation yep. or QRP, both, uh, and then the PA stop uh, for some reason and should be repowering and should be back in the arming mode. Mm -hmm. So, without any um, user um, interaction. So, that's, that's one of the next feature. In this case, the PA can be used, of course, with the with the with any transceiver, yep. or for an automatic station. So my 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 plan is to build a box which can be used as the automatic windling gateway in the tree, yep. in the field, everywhere. Outstanding. Yeah, that that's the plan. That is one of the feature, and the second feature I never talk about that is I want to improve the heat dissipation. Yep. So I'm working on the heat pipe design of the PA. Um, actually, I don't know whether it will be released, uh, but it it's, it's depends on, yeah, on what, what I can achieve. Yep. If it makes a lot of sense and I see the, the heat dissipation is improved a lot, then, of course, the PA will have an integrated heat pipe to spread the, the heat energy over the uh, entire over the enclosure. Exactly. Yeah, outstanding. Exactly. Well, hopefully the people watching this video will give you some feedback about that in the, in the comments. <laughs> I would like to... It, it is very welcome because I listen to, to, to the user. I listen to the operator and mm -hmm. I want to hear what I can improve. Outstanding. But it is it is a special device. I feel it as a as a special um addition yep. to, to the setup. I I <laughs> uh, one of my buddies was asking me about this amplifier and uh, comparing it uh, to you know the options from eBay. And uh, he said, what's so special about it? And I said, well, perhaps I need to make another video about it because clearly you didn't get it. And uh, I explained it in this way. You know, not only did I explain the features, I said, it's kind of like the, the Bugatti of ham radio portable amplifiers. You know, we have uh, lots of different, uh, not lots, but what, three or four different amplifiers, quality amplifiers. And mm -hmm. then we have this one. And this one is so special. I mean, uh, th that's why I'm investing the time to do this interview and to talk about it because, you know, it's important for us to show the passion behind the development. It's uh, it's it's a very special amplifier. Mm. It should be special, and it is special. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's some technical details which might be outstanding. Yep, nine hundred grams. <laughs> yes. Full, full aluminum CNC body. Yep. Stable, industrial quality, and 60 watt, or even the special version with 100 watts yep. are output power with 900 grams of energy, I would say, right? So that is, yeah, I, I guess this is one of the exciting thing i would say yeah i think so i think so too all right uh my next question so 
Uh, what's the most popular feature request you've received so far? <laughs> yeah. So one feature request is brighter LEDs, brighter LEDs. Yeah. Um, for the outdoor operation. Daytime outdoor operation. Daytime outdoor yeah. operation. It is sometimes not easy to read the LED um, signaling, yeah. like power meter, SVR meter, which band is selected. Temperature. Te well, temperature, right. Something like that. So I will think about how to increase the brightness. Theoretically, it's possible to increase. Yep. It's not possible by software. So that's, that's the drawback, let's say that. So it, it can be implemented for future devices. Yep. Um, but not by software. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, and the user manual can be better. Yeah, that, that's a, the second one. The device has so much set up possibilities from Vox delay, from Vox sensitivity. Everything can be set it up by, by the keys or switches yep. on the device and also externally with a special um, USB cable. Yep. And then it can be also configured by the computer. Uh, so a lot of things need to be explained in a in a manual and it it's sometimes it's complex that's that's the point right yeah so yeah. the manual could be better can be yeah. better but we're also amateur radio operators and we should be able to figure it out right, yeah. <laughs> so right. i haven't had any problems with it uh, i think when did i get the first amplifier oliver i think um I think I may have asked you one question, you know, along the way, but uh, they're so simple. Uh, I mean, they look complex. There's lots of buttons and lights and flashing this and flashing that. But if you just play with it a little while, it's pretty difficult to, to mess it up. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. And uh, it's obvious what happens because you get so much feedback. It's giving you, it's telling you all the time what's going on. So. But anyway, I like this LED idea. I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, well, I have, I have some feedback that uh, I'm wondering if the LEDs are brighter during the daytime, will they be too bright for those of us who operate also at night in the field? So, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a very good question. Um, I don't have an answer. Yeah. I mean, theoretically, it's possible to, you know, <laughs> dim the light. <laughs> yeah, but it will be more complex. Yeah. The PR, the PA don't know the the time. You know. Yeah, so that's the, true. That's the PA true. don't don't know whether the, the weather is bright or dark. So yeah. it, there is no sensor actually, the light sensor integrated. So it 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 is yeah, it's difficult yeah. to to have everything. But on the other hand. I mean, uh, it's if they're too bright, it's nothing. A uh, uh, piece of uh, light tape over the LEDs wouldn't solve, you know. So, um, I mean, it, it's too bright LED lights is not really an issue. I think I can I can deal with it. Yeah. Hmm. Fair Maybe enough. A little bit brighter to help uh, some some guys to read the information. Maybe there maybe there's a way in the middle to. Yeah, to not be too bright and not too dim. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see how it goes. Yeah. Uh, let's see. My next question. What was it? Um, ah, what kind of operational feedback or operating feedback have you received from uh, field operators? Yeah, the one interesting uh, I remember, the one for me, the one, one, interesting or amazing report was in from Aust Australia. Yeah. Australia. So he operate out of the bush, 
right? Yep. So it's in the outback. And he wrote me a very nice letter by email and uh, um, said that he very happy about what's happened. So he made an SSB QSO from Australia to Spain, which is <laughs> 13,000 13, kilometers away. Yeah. It's 57. So, and the Spain station operated with one kilowatt. Outstanding. So he, he, he has uh, about 60, and it was his very stable connection with the 57, with the 57 report. Uh, yes, it makes me happy too, right? So, absolutely. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did, did he mention what band that was on? Um, I don't know. I well, think it was 20 meters, 20 meters, I guess, but I, I have to check. I don't know. Yep, no worries. Mm -hmm. I, I've also had an interesting experience, of course, working data modes. I'm usually working data modes, but they had a QSO with a station in Japan. And uh, I was doing it with a compromised antenna. I, I assumed I was going to get uh, just some uh, Scandinavian or European stations and uh, it was on 17 meters and this operator came back to me from Japan and I was, I was astonished. I was just astonished. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, you know, most of the time I'm doing these pragmatic things like working with link or JS8 call or something like that. But every now and then I have another call sign. You might not know that. So every oh. now and then I, I use my other call sign to avoid mm -hmm. the, the pileups, you know, just, oh, yeah. Yeah, just to enjoy the radio, mm -hmm. and uh, and I, I I suppose my favorite casual band is seventeen meters. So yeah. uh, having this the station coming back to me from Japan and just um, it just triggered that magic again from the radio. You know that yeah. feeling that uh, wow this this just happened, and uh, I I wasn't even pushing the amplifier all the way. I might have been driving it with uh, one watt or one and a half watts or something like that. And it's just excellent. So thank you for that. I, I, I really like, like to hear uh, some of, um, of, of this kind of reports because I'm also very happy to, to work on mobile, like uh, on the go or yep. in the car sometimes. I have RF. Uh, uh, transceiver in my car. It's yep. also nice, not of course, not during driving, but yep. um, and and sometimes I I I ha had a very good connection far away, and yeah, it it makes a lot of fun actually, and that is what we want. <laughs> Outstanding. All right, what's my next question? Um, ah, this one's probably not so nice, Oliver. Mm. Um, sorry about it, but though, honestly, people are asking, why is the PA500 so difficult to get? Yeah, I guess, I mean, three reasons. I about to reduce it to two. So one reason is um, I only can spend a limited time to build yep. because I have a daytime job. And um, I reserved a certain amount of time to produce the devices. Ah, so you're not some mega corporation uh, cranking them out uh, in the dungeons of China someplace. You're... Of course not. Of course yeah. not. I mean, yes, it is. It is a special device. Yeah. And I think it needs to be handled carefully. So, and. I, I only can spend a limited uh, of time, which is, um, yeah, basically limited, yeah. But anyway, I, I do my best uh, to, to, to build, um, yeah, I would say not much, but enough to, to fulfill the demand. But at the end, there's a wait list, wait list in the U.S., for a longer time, the demand is higher than I can build, but well, that's the case, right? Right. 
I can't um, change it. And I also don't want it because, um, yeah. It is special. It is special and it's not a cheap plastic bomber yeah. compared to other devices, which looks ugly. It's cheap. So that that is the opposite of them, right? right. So, yeah, it's a, it's a value. That's right. So That's right. Yeah, the other point is it is maybe more difficult in the actual time. It is super difficult to to get the components. Yeah. Uh, I feel like like a black market dealer sometimes, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, I don't know how I can build my devices two weeks ago. Right. But, um, in the next two weeks, sorry. Because... I don't have components yet. So I try to get components on time. Uh, it is basically very difficult to get components. And I'm lucky that I can get my quantity, what I, what I need to build, to build devices, actually. Right. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have components, but it's, of course, impossible uh, to 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 build a huge amount of devices because of of uh, missing components. Yeah. So um, I can buy twenty, thirty, or forty RF transistors, but it's impossible to get hundred or even more right. because it's just not available. Uh, well, any idea of what's causing this component shortage? Is it just the world as it is today, or? Uh, yeah, I think it's different, several, several reasons. So one is higher demands in general. So the suppliers and vendors um, produce what they can, but it's not enough. Right. So this is one thing. The other thing is the raw material issues like... Um, um, yeah, the material, what is needed to build the IC is an example, right? Mm -hmm. The chip silicon factories are 100% occupied. Right. 100% occupied. And Apple or Samsung, they book in advance 20 or 30% of the whole capacity. I can tell you that the big A book... 30% capacity of the big T, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's, a re that's basically one of the reasons why other ICs or other components are basically not built in time because of the prioritization. Right. Right. That's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a problem, yeah. So it all drive, drives the costs up. Right, so at uh, on the at the beginning last year, the RF transistor pricing was fifty percent of the current one, so oh. half of the price. Now it's it's doubled. It's it's that's crazy. Well, that wasn't one of my questions, but uh, that that explains the also maybe in part explains the increase in in mm -hmm. price of the amplifier. Yeah. So if the components are more difficult to get and the component prices are also increasing, naturally the amplifier price will increase yeah. as well. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Aluminum raw material, 300% um, in the last 12 months. Yeah, that, it, it, um, it's difficult. I mean, I built, I don't know, 30 or 40 devices per month. That is nothing compared to a big company, right? Right. And, and I don't get the big discounts from the supplier. So I have to pay for what I want. You know? Fair enough. So this leads me to my next question, which is probably irrelevant at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but the next question would have been, and you can answer it if you want to. Yeah. Uh, are there any plans to mass produce the PA500? No, I think I can't manage there's one point. The other one, I I 
couldn't I can't believe it is currently possible in the current situation right. because of the problems with the components. The PA itself is designed for MP. So the whole um, SMT, are these SMT assembly, which means the components on the PCB yep. automatically assembled with, by, by a ro robot kind of a pick and place machine, mm -hmm. also by an automatic soldering machine and an automatic optical inspection. So this is already streamlined for MP. So the PCB assembly, it's full automatic. Just already. to interrupt you for a moment, MP means mass production. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, MP no worries. Mass production. The, yeah. the device is mass production already. So mm -hmm. there's, of course, hand soldering involved for the uh, release and inductors. And the inductors are basically so special, it ca ca can't be uh, purchased. It, it is self-made, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah. Outstanding. I didn't yeah. know that. Because um, there's a ratio, a power ratio, mm -hmm. which um, is needed for the 100 watts or even 60 watts. And the inductors, which is available outside, let's say mass produced inductors, are basically yeah. too big for the device. Ah. So I have to build my own um, um, coil inductors to make sure that it fits in into the device. And um, forgive me for smiling. I'm just, this is again the passion that I've been talking about. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And um, yeah, this makes the device so special because this is 20 millimeters thick, yep. 900 grams in weight, and and it has a heavy output power. I mean, it's not one kilowatt, of course, but it, it is it is a device which, which you can put in your pocket, right? So That's it's right. Basically, yeah, it's um, yeah, but with the right yeah. antenna and that amplifier, it is like a kilowatt for the portable operator. Oh yeah, you know? yeah. So so yeah, compared, yeah, that's yeah. Um, well, all right. Let's move on. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see what I have here. Are there any interesting PA five hundred updates on the horizon? You may have answered that already, but you can expand on that if there's anything. Yeah, I mean, we already talked about the auto power on feature. Yep. Um, yeah, which is definitely planned. And I can also share some secrets. <laughs> by yeah. Just you and me, I will share you <laughs> some secrets. You and me <laughs> and 50,000 of our closest friends. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean... I'm I'm working on the um, on the battery pack. Oh, yeah. Um, Would you like to tell us about? It? Yes, I can. Um, basically, it has the same robust um, aluminum chassis. Yep. Comfortable to the PA can be put together. Yep. Can be screwed together, and also the TX500 can be also add to the block. Yep. It's also possible. The um, the battery has an output for an external transceiver, yep, like a TX five hundred or like IC seven hundred five. It has an output for the PA five hundred, of course. It has an sourcing input, which is a little bit special because you can directly connect your solar panel directly without any extra charging module. You've Just been watching my video. <laughs> I do it, yeah, right. And uh, because... So, hold on, wait a moment. Yeah. So I can just plug in any of the power film panels I have directly into that battery pack without you, a charge control. Well, yes, you can put any... Um, Power film, a solar panel which deliver 18 volts. Yeah. Start by 16, 14 is also okay. But 
the unregulated um, yeah, solar module or power firm, firm uh, device can be directly connected because it has a built-in charging module inside the battery pack. So you've just removed one of the components. Yeah, exactly. And save weight ah. and space, right? That, right. That's, the plan. that's the plan. To have everything in one hand, that is my dream. Okay. I'm going to throw you under the bus a little bit, Oliver. Mm -hmm. What's about the uh, the RF interference from the charging one? There's currently no interference detected. <laughs> I mean, it's all, it is still on my test bench. I can yeah. tell you there's no device out. Um, but I feel good to share this information right now because I'm very confident that it will work very well. And uh, yeah, I will. I will build some devices very soon for um, yeah for our testers, for my testers, and then I guess a period of three months is needed to to yeah to to see how robust the device is. Yep, and how it plays together with the um, with the other devices. That that's also important to make sure there is a hassle free issue free edition yep well how many amp hours or watt hours right that's a good question i can tell you i will not use lithium ion batteries because of the safety aspect yep so i want ah oh, basically i used um lithium ferro uh it called Leafy PO4. Yep. Life PO4. Yeah. Life -PO4. Lithium iron phosphate. Exactly. And it's um, the setup is 4S2P. So the device has eight cells, 18650, which give me or give us about 50 watt hours. Oh, Not basically. Bad. Yeah, it's 52 or something like that. But Net, it's it's maybe fifty or forty-eight, something like that. And what's the max current load? Well, um, I could drive the PA with sixty watt output power. Yep. Plus the uh, transceiver, it is about eight amps or eight and a half. Um, it will work. So there's no, um, yeah, no issue. I found no issue actually, um, but it's still under test, right? So yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can imagine eight amps or eight and a half by 12, 12 and a half volts. That means the battery is empty after half an hour. No, if, it means if, if you don't have a solar panel connected to it, the battery oh, is. Yes, of course. Right. Of course. If no solar panel is connected and you are, um, uh, PTT guides or you you press the PTT the whole time, then then the device will be empty after half an hour on on FM. So if you go back to SSB and have a normal um, use case, mm -hmm. uh, then it's few hours. And with solar panel connected, maybe it's it's a whole day. Yeah. 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 So this sounds like it's uh, it's designed for. Summits on the air, or parks on the air, or you know, some type of uh, rapid deployment scenario where you need a robust power supply yeah. and the ability to minimize the amount of components you carry to the field. Right, right. I mean, the 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 the, the large current is only possible to deliver with the right cables internally. Yeah. Or so every every um. Uh, how does it call every um, every cable, every line is is twice. So I use um, double um, connections between everything, yep. and every every cable is a Teflon Teflon coated because uh, of the safety aspects we want. Yep. Yeah. Wow. That's basically the the reason why I can 
yeah, I, I, I can drive it with up to 10, watt, uh, 10 amperes. Yeah. Absolutely magnificent. I'm looking forward to it, and I hope I'm going to be one of your customers if you ever decide to sell that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Let's, let's have a test first, and then if it's good enough for the guys out there, then yep. I'm happy to, to build uh, some battery packs. Yeah. Outstanding. Actually, there's, you know, there's the market has really been, uh, I'll say, unkind to uh, to amateur radio operators, field radio operators. Um, you know, when we're talking about efficiency, the big manufacturers don't get it. They don't even understand the the, the topic or why we want you know better efficiency. Um, they don't understand, you know. Quite often, I'm told, well, you should just take a bigger battery, you know, and I re reply or respond to that by saying, oh, should I leave my water at home or, uh, or my food or, or something else yeah, to yeah, carry yeah. a bigger battery? It doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Um, so, you know, this, there's a cutoff between the field radio operator and manufacturers. Now, the 705 and the TX500 uh, are excellent examples of us moving in the right direction. Even the Elecraft KX2 and KX3, magnificent radios, but they weren't designed to be charged in the field, so I usually exclude them from this conversation. Mm -hmm. But uh, the TX500 and the ICOM IC705 just change everything. Even people will be astonished when I say this, but there's this uh, X5105, this old uh, Zygu radio, and oh, yeah. its replacement, the uh, X6100, also mm -hmm. an excellent, because they've taken the ideas from, uh, from the TX500 and the, and the ICOM IC705 and applied them to those radios. But um, we're finally moving slowly in the right direction to uh, sustainable field communications with extremely low power, or not power, I should correct myself. Extremely mm -hmm. high efficiency. High efficiency. That that that's a game changer. Yeah. I I think you already mentioned. So when or if the device sucks too much energy, you need a bigger battery. Yeah. If you need a bigger battery, you have devices which suck so much energy. You need a bigger solar panel, which is yeah. heavy. That's and right. You ends up with the whole mess and and. Uh, two or three luggage for your <laughs> for your radio equipment for your pocket radio. <laughs> oh yeah. man, it's like the dog chasing its own tail, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I did a video. Hopefully, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll just I'll put it up on the screen when I edit this interview. But um, I did a video called "How to Solar Power Your Portable Ham Radio," mm -hmm. and uh, in that, I changed the way I talk about power, portable power for the field. And I, I stopped talking about, you know, uh, power and started talking about efficiency. Um, yes. And a lot of people were confused by this, but um, hopefully it starts when they watch it a couple of times, it, you know, it'll start to catch on. So let's see, Oliver. Ah, you've already answered my, my last question, which was, uh, well, what what's your next project? And I guess that's the battery. Oh but, yeah. Uh, do you have anything else uh, planned or bouncing around inside that uh, mm, brain no. of yours? No. Awesome. Yeah. Of course, I'm I'm a people who uh, I'm a man who who play with everything around. So like yeah. uh, uh, radio and PA, and uh, I like to play with uh, Winlink. Yeah. So I I like to play with RPRS on HF, right? This is also a very nice thing on yeah. um, fifteen on thirty meters. Yep. Yeah. I used to do this also. We used to cover this yeah. on the channel, but uh, Chris, um, I forget his last name and call sign. Uh, he's from the UK. He had a piece of software that was very good for uh, HF APRS. 
but uh, he couldn't maintain it anymore. It was, uh, so what are you using for HFAPRS? Again, please. What, what software are you using for HFAPRS? Uh, it's called Alpha, which is from, is it from SCS? The oh. model manufacturer. Yes, it's Alpha. It has the, um, the possibility to have, to have a point-to-point -point chat communication over HF, like yep. um, the, how does it call the whisper thing? Yeah. Um, um, yeah, you can ha just have a chat via HF. At the same time, um, um, a barker is sending out, uh, and you can see it on rps.fe, uh, and also to see the connection, which station you, you um, could reach. Yeah. And it's very interesting. Yesterday, I could uh, I, I was recognized in Canada and I only have a 30 meter uh, RPIS running with um, with the PA500 mm -hmm. and, and an antenna which is half a meter long it's a DK <laughs> 2 DK 2 RZ yeah. is the, is the uh, manufacturer oh I have an antenna here this is the antenna. Can you see that? Yeah. Right. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a um, 30 meters antenna. 30 meter. And uh, for 30 meter. And the antenna is good enough. It is just 50 watt to, to send uh, data over the um, Atlantic, over the, um, over the water. Not over bad. So it, it was like a loaded vertical. Yes, it is. A, yes, exactly. Wow. Wow. Outstanding. What's about the hardware you use for that? Is that an SCS modem or uh, is it? Well, yes, I have an SCS tracker called SCS tracker. Yeah. It is, uh, I guess, the cheapest modem from SCS. Mm -hmm. 200 bucks or something like that. Oh, that's but, reasonable. Yes, it's reasonable, but I'm not sure whether it's still in production. Ah. Um, of course, you can also use the 74000, 7400, which is 500 or 600, which is more expensive. But the, the whole system, of course, will also work with uh, Vara HF, which is also oh, nice. I didn't. Oh, and, that's interesting. Yes, and Vara HF also has a new software. Uh, Var AC. You can chat over yeah. uh, HF. I'm working on a video on it already. It's very, very nice. And the yeah. software is basically for free. Yep. And um, yeah, of course, you, you can pay a little bit, little money to, to get a full version, to have higher bandwidth or higher speed. To transmission speed, but it's very nice. So it's also a game changer, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I'm a Vara fanatic. If you if you didn't know that, mm. I just I in America, Vara, I like it too. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's excellent. Absolutely, as excellent. And there's no weight. You have just on a on a computer, right? Yeah. Everything is on a computer. You have a connection by Wi-Fi to your radio. An example: seven or five. The 705 is connected to the PA and to the antenna. Everything is battery powered. It is nice. I like well, it. Was that your field computer you just picked up? Um, yes, it is my field computer and it is um, Microsoft Go. Is that the Go? Yeah. Go 3. I, is that? Oh, that's the one you were telling me about in Helsinki. I, I think I need to upgrade. It, it, you said it has the internal GPS. It has an internal GPS from the, um, um, well, how do they call it? The, the cellular module, phone yep. module. Yep. And you don't need a SIM card. So the GPS is available. And you only need a, a, a tiny software to bridge the data from the GPS to the WinLink application. 
Outstanding. Outstanding. So that, again, removes another component. It, okay, if you have a 705, you, you have the GPS. But for example, for the TX500, it removes another component. Right. Yeah. Outstanding. All right, Oliver. Yeah. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure chatting with you, and I think this is going to be a very popular video. It was my pleasure, too. Thank yeah. you, Julian. What's and a nice talk. Thank you for, uh, for visiting in, in Helsinki. And I think uh, next time I need to come and visit you in Germany. Oh, you are very welcome. All right. Rock and roll. Thank you, Oliver. We'll talk to you Thank again you. soon. Yes, soon. Ciao. Bye. -bye. Bye. Julian. Have a nice day. So that brings us to the end of the video. I really do hope you've enjoyed uh, the interview with Oliver, Kilo Lima 4, Kilo Alpha, the designer and manufacturer of the PA500. Now, one of the reasons I did this interview with him, I invested the time for this interview, is there is a disconnect between the traditional large manufacturers in the amateur radio community and the field radio and emergency communications operators. There's this disconnect where they don't yet understand the importance of efficiency in the field. In fact, I believe we're kind of in the dark ages. So it's up to us as amateur radio operators, as portable amateur radio operators, to ask for or even demand more efficient portable radio equipment. I mean, we have the ICOM IC705, we have the TX500 now. The Elecraft KX2 and KX3 are extremely efficient, but not designed to be charged in the field. But still, they're extremely efficient radios. It's up to us to push the envelope to show manufacturers that, hey, there's a market here for highly efficient, highly mobile, field-chargeable radios. Until then, we really need to support these small manufacturers who are making bespoke equipment tailored to the field radio operator. Anyway, if you'd like to see more videos like this, more interviews, please let me know in the comments or in a WinLink message or whatever way is most convenient for you to reach out. With that said, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please leave me a comment and or a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.